Hey guys, today we are going to be doing a little Q&A and not just like any other plain, boring yawn of a Q&A. We are going to be doing something interesting, hopefully. And I asked you guys on Instagram to send me questions that I have never answered before, never talked about before. So I kind of gave you guys a challenge because I've been doing social media since I was 19. Now I'm 26. So I've talked about a lot of things. So hopefully you guys thought of some things that I had never talked about and never answered. But you guys really, I mean, you came through with the questions. But let me just say one thing. I was actually going to be filming a Kristen's Kitchen episode today. I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram or not. But if you do, you might have seen I made my friend a cake for her baby shower. It was a blueberry lemon layered cake. And it was the most delicious cake I have ever tasted. And it's beautiful. And I wanted to do a Kristen's Kitchen episode about it because so many of you guys wanted to see the recipe and see how it was done. And I did not have enough lemon so i couldn't film that video today i really wanted to film a video but that will hopefully be next week's video and i'm really trying to get back on my youtube roll of once a week videos because i think this last time i had a two week gap which is unacceptable so today we're getting a raw juicy sorry i said raw and juicy that's just not a good combo real in-depth exciting q a so i hope that you like this video too but i know y'all are really excited to see the kristen's kitchen episode back again so just be looking forward to that next one okay let's just get into it with this first one i don't think i've ever talked about this did you ever consider breaking up with marcus at any point yes i did i actually did consider breaking up with Marcus. It was sometime in the timeline of our three and a half year long distance relationship. So if you guys don't know, me and Marcus dated for six months in person when we were in college and then he moved to LA and I finished college. Well, I still had three and a half years of school left. Long distance is no joke. I actually have a whole video about it if you guys are in a long distance relationship. I'll link that video down below. I remember really struggling with the fact that I knew that the end of the long distance relationship was not in the near future and I was going to have to be very very patient um, to wait till a time that we could like actually be together again and that was honestly the hardest part and I would cry like every single night and I was just like I don't know if I can do this like I don't know if I can finish college which I really wanted to do um and wait and wait and wait and obviously I'm so glad that I did but there was definitely times where I really gosh I can't do this anymore and I'm sure there was times that Marcus thought oh my gosh I can't do this anymore but you know here we are and I'm so happy we stuck it out it can be really a great way to build up your communication and set you guys up for success because I feel like you really do have to learn to communicate with each other you can't just like get in an argument and then look at each other and be like you're so cute and hug it out and just like forget about it like you really do have to communicate because you obviously aren't in person did the effects of social media contribute to the postpartum depression that you felt um yes definitely <laughs> well first i don't think i had full-on postpartum depression maybe i did the world may never know. I think that there was definitely some days where it was like very evident that I was definitely struggling with something deeper than just sadness and it, maybe I did have postpartum depression. I don't know. But um, I think that social media definitely did have a negative effect on my mental health let's just say that after I had James it was really nice because I took two months off of social media like doing brand deals and work and stuff like that I did post like here and there little pictures and updates of him but for about two months I didn't really get on stories and talk and anything like that and in that time I really didn't have like any negative feelings towards my body or negative thoughts in my head about like my appearance or how good of a mom I was and then I remember getting on stories like for the first time in so long and I just was like chatting with you guys on stories like how I always do and I remember I got a dm from somebody and I'll never forget this dm but she said motherhood is so beautiful but what it does to your appearance is horrifying or something like that and I was just like wait and I went back and watched my stories and I was like 
do I look horrifying? Like, it was kind of like a scary thought and it was so stupid because I obviously should have just toned out that freaking troll. But um, I just remember that's when I kind of started spiraling in my head like, I didn't want to post myself on social media until I felt completely back to myself, which was so silly because here I am almost eight months postpartum and I still don't feel like a hundred percent like myself. So imagine if I had like waited and waited and waited, I, I w it would have been months, it would have been years till I saw you guys again. But um, I just remember that's when I really started picking apart my body and be like, okay, I gotta get back to the gym, I gotta get back in shape, like blah 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 blah. And it was so funny because until that moment, I really didn't have any thoughts like that in my head. Sometimes it's best for me to just not open my DMs if I am going through like a little mental health um, downward spiral, but uh, that's something that I've definitely had to learn, that boundary of just being like, let's not open the DMs today and let's have a good day today because that's really where the trolls get you is in your DMs. Someone says, is it true that your boobs are never the same after birth and pregnancy and breastfeeding? So I definitely thought that was gonna be true for me because my boobs definitely like tripled in size, especially towards the end of my pregnancy. And then right after I had James, my boobs were so full of milk and just like engorged. I was like, yeah, my boobs will never be the same. And then I started pumping like every three hours for over a month. And I heard that pumping like will really, really ruin your boobs. And so I was like, well, that's it for me. <laughs> my boobs are gonna be dead forever. And honestly, my boobs now, now I'm not breastfeeding anymore. I stopped breastfeeding at four months. Um, but now my boobs, are pretty much the exact same. I feel like they're squishier. If you guys have had babies, do you feel the same way? Like I just feel like they're really, really squishy, but they're they're not like saggy or like my nipples aren't any different than before. If your boobs have changed, your body has changed, that's completely normal. Your body has just created a new life and your body is gonna be different. Your heart's gonna be different. Your emotions, your brain, everything is different after you have a baby. So. Boobs are just another one of those things that I feel like change for most women. A lot of people are asking about like sex post, uh, not post marriage, sex post labor and like birth. But I talked about that in my postpartum um, recap video. There's a wasp in here and I'm trying not to think about it, but there is a wasp on that windowsill just crawling around and I'm not loving that. I'll link that video down below because I talked a lot about like breastfeeding and postpartum sex and all that kind of stuff in that video. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of questions about postpartum weight loss and I was thinking about doing a whole video about it, but also it's such a sensitive subject that I don't know if I wanna do a whole video about it. I'm just very torn. So you guys can comment down below and tell me what you guys would really like to hear because I feel like I didn't have the same experience that I saw a lot of people on social media have which is like oh I just had my baby and now I'm like back to normal because that definitely that was not my journey I remember feeling so annoyed every time someone would post that they are like back to their pre-pregnancy weight and they were like six weeks postpartum I was like how is that possible um but if you guys would like to see a whole video about postpartum weight loss and like the exact things that I did to lose the weight, let me know down below. But also you can tell me that I don't wanna see that because it's too triggering or like it's just not what I wanna see. So just let me know. But I don't wanna to go too in depth about it, but that was kind of like my experience with it. Also the question right under that kind of goes along with it. Someone says, what was your weight before, during, and after James? From 2020 to now, my body has undergone so many changes. I went from being like the fittest I'd ever been in my entire life, like weightlifting every single day for two hours, being very intense about working out and like I was like very passionate about it. And my body was just so strong and it was the strongest I've ever been in my whole life. And then May 2020 got hit by a car and I basically lost all of my muscle and I got down to like 98 pounds at one point when I was like recovering from my accident just because I was on so many medications and just, it's very common to lose a lot of weight after something really traumatic happens to your body. 
So I went from being the fittest that I ever was to being like the skinniest, sickest that I ever was. Then I got pregnant and then I was the heaviest I ever was. And now I'm really just trying to work on like the balance of it all because I feel like so many fluctuations in my weight and body kind of took a toll on me mentally because I was just like, what is going on? Um, so now I'm really just trying to focus on getting strong, getting healthy, feeling good, and not trying to focus on the number on the scale or anything like that, which has been very helpful. And um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. <laughs> I got so many questions about Marcus and does he have a job? Am I the main breadwinner? Blah, blah, blah. So I guess I'll answer that question because I get that question a lot. And I would say that for the past few years, yes, I've been the main breadwinner, I guess you can say. But Marcus still does work. He just hasn't been doing social media stuff for a couple of years. I mean, he still does here and there, but he definitely has not been doing as much as I have. And he really works a lot more like behind the scenes, helping me shoot things, helping me edit videos sometimes. He also does all of our like real estate investments and investment kind of stuff. But this year he was like, Kristen, my goal this year is to get back to YouTube, get back to social media. He really like felt ready to get back to it because he had been doing social media for so long. So I'm so happy for him that he took a break is a lot. I mean, it's a lot to be consistently posting on social media for so long. And so now his goal is to get back to YouTube and do more social media stuff, do more brand deals. And um, I think that's gonna be really, really good. But sometimes I feel like a lot of people see me doing social media a lot and they don't see Marcus as much. So they just think that he's not working or doing anything at all, which could not be further from the truth. So just because you're not seeing somebody working on the daily does not mean that they're not working at all. And Marcus definitely does a ton of stuff behind the scenes, but I am really happy that he is getting back to social media and he's like refound his love for it because he is the most creative person that I know, funniest person that I know, and I am so glad that people are going to see more of that side of him this year. My mom is bringing James. <gasps> what are you doing? Give him. <laughs> hey, oh. sleepy night night. <laughs> <laughs> James, what is that? <laughs> he just woke up and he's so nice. Hey. Hey. James, you want to answer a, a hard hitting last few questions with your mommy? I think that's a yes. Ready for the tea? Someone asks, have you ever met a mean influencer? James, have we met a mean influencer before? <laughs> have we met a mean influencer? You know, I feel like most of the influencers that I've met have yeah. been, yeah, have been very nice. And, you know, sometimes there are definitely people that you just don't click with as much. And that's definitely happened. But I've really never had, like, a huge issue <laughs> or anything like that with another influencer and also I feel like I have met some of my best friends in the whole world through social media Cezanne, JC <gasps> you love Cezanne and JC and there hasn't been anybody that I've been like whoa 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 you are a mean mean person so I hope that answers your question and sorry that wasn't really actually that much tea <laughs> but of course there's gonna be people that you just don't connect with or you just don't vibe with or you just don't see being like a best friend <laughs> James but um I would say everyone I've met has been pretty nice someone says what has been the hardest part of being a mom but James I should really ask you what's the hardest part about being a baby he says there's no hard parts it's all pretty fun he says, not being able to stand on everything that I want to without hitting my head has been really annoying. But I think the hardest part about being a mom has just been mom guilt. Like, even with my mom holding him downstairs while he took a nap while I filmed this video, like, there's that little bit of mom guilt that I'm, like, not down there with him. And it's just so silly. 
and I know that mom guilt is silly most of the time, but I definitely struggle with mom guilt and I think every mom does and um, it just sometimes feels like there's not ever a... <gasps> <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm talking about mom guilt. Oh. And sometimes it just feels like there's not enough of you to go around and when you are taking time for yourself It can feel like you're being selfish, but to be the best mom that you can possibly be you have to take time for yourself Yes, and, you do and there's my mom. mom you be... pick the last question. Okay. Let me see These are these are questions that I've never answered. It's supposed to be that That's the vibe. Oh I did. Oh did. How do you and your sister maintain anti-life being so far away from each other? Oh, that's a good question. If you don't know, my sister lives in Copenhagen, Denmark, and she has for how long? Nine years? Ten years? Ten years this December. Ten years this December. I've been to Copenhagen so over nine. nine. I think I've been ten times to Copenhagen. Um, and the way that we maintain aunthood is she usually comes to the U.S. once a year. I usually try to go to Copenhagen <laughs> once a year. And then we FaceTime pretty much every single day. At least two or three times. Yeah. My mom FaceTimes her even more to see the kids. But, um, yeah. I think FaceTime helps so much. But obviously nothing is the same of, like, being in person. And I think that one day, though. They could maybe be moving to Tennessee. Oh, yes, indeed. That would make me so happy. And me too. But um, I also love visiting Copenhagen. But I, it's really hard to have any family member that lives overseas or even in a different state as you. It's really hard. And that's why my parents are moving to Tennessee. That's why I'm trying to get Ashlyn and Austin to move to Tennessee. That's my big plan in life is just to get every single person I love to move here. <gasps> Yeah, yeah. He keep heat through his pants. Yeah, he's very hydrated. He's very hydrated. Oh, hydration. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And my next video hopefully will be a Kristen's Kitchen episode. And maybe you can help me bake a cake. Heck right, yeah, Jake? you can. Yes, he took his finger in it and make it sweet. Yeah, yeah. But love you guys. Bye. I will see you soon. Bye. Say bye, James. He just wants to eat my hair. Bye. He just wants to see me. He doesn't want to watch. Oh, ow, ow.